Hello, friends. Welcome back to our well-decorated pain colony, apparently. I think a lot of people like this change for some reason, but I'm glad I could randomize this into something that people liked, so there you go. Uh, welcome back. This is the Ultra Supreme Max difficulty. Here's the rules if you're new here or just want a refresher. We have to play on the hardest asteroid, on the hardest seeds we could find, have to get every achievement in the game in one run. No duplicants are allowed to die. We're not allowed to be picky with our duplicants. A few other restrictions here, uh, but we're in decent shape, I would say. Uh, if you have noticed, a lot of time has passed. By the way, here's the time play just on this one colony. But a lot of time has passed uh, on this run so far. Uh, but a lot of time has passed since the last video, too. So, in the meantime, what I've been doing is a lot of the not-as-fun stuff. Uh, the performance, I'm really getting more and more curious uh, by the day, but what I've been doing lately is what we talked about in the last video, and that is just building these giant walls of plastic tiles. So, I've made a good amount of progress, but I've started to run out of plastic. So, I'm going to switch over to Mafic Rock and a few other types of resources that I really don't care that much about. And hopefully that will help the performance. Um, it's doing okay so far. It's not great, but the biggest performance wins that we've gotten so far is I'm rebuilding a lot of our rocket platform into different chambers. So the idea is we're going to make this a four-chambered area so that the stuff that's inside here can condense and turn into the material it's going to turn into so that we can uh, get rid of it or get it out of here so it's not costing so much. The other thing that I did to this rocket platform is, um, I don't know if I've actually formally talked about this quite yet. I think I did, but it's been a while. Uh, this liquid nuclear waste that comes down here from these radiation rockets, it'll turn into uh, nuclear fallout when it's first created from the rocket, and then it will turn back down into this liquid nuclear waste, which winds up deleting a lot of heat. And I don't know why I never really noticed or thought about this before, but having it bordering a steam area to absorb the rocket heat with metal tiles doesn't really make sense because then that makes the steam down here never actually get hot enough to be used by the steam turbines. Um, I didn't think about this before that much. Uh, I don't really know why, but now that I'm thinking about this again, I went through and redid all the tiles to be ceramic so that this is a decidedly different temperature than the stuff that's out here. I want the stuff out here to be cool if I can. So I've already got a cooling setup for that, which we talked about before. But this bottom area, if I get heat from the rockets, I want to keep that heat and not exchange it with the stuff that's out here. Because it just becomes kind of pointless if all of the liquid uh, nuclear waste comes down. That will wind up cooling it off so much that it may it not really matter anymore. So I wanted to separate those two things the best I could. And then the idea of getting these all into their four little chambers is just so that the uh, nuclear fallout gets condensed more quickly. Uh, so I, we're going to start launching rockets here in just a bit to test this out, but I think it will help. We probably still will have points of bad performance only because there will be so many state changes happening at one time. And we'll get into the nerdy stuff of it, but the basics are that if this is built in Unity, creating a new object in Unity can be quite expensive. If you're doing it like, you know, several hundred per frame or something like that, like this is trying to do. Uh, it can get very, very expensive trying to do that. So the state changes are definitely the biggest culprit. But this, the performance is not awful. Um, the big downside of performance, obviously for recording, is the frame rate. But the other big downside is that the they tried to help the performance quite a bit because when a duplicate is deciding their task here, you can see Lindsay deciding a task, they will wait a really long time before deciding on their next task because they don't want to make the game hitch while the duplicate is looking for something to do. And those calculations can be quite complicated. Um, so at minimum, I want to make sure we're getting a good amount of duplicate uptime in... Uh, in terms of like how long they're taking to make their decisions and to improve the performance here. I think because of all this, I'm just gonna make an entirely separate video all about performance and do a lot of extensive testing um, just to hopefully get some more solid answers in terms of like, what are the biggest uh, detractors from performance and how can you help that the most? Ellie, why are you starving? Oh, no wonder. Thinking about chicken on the toilet again, no wonder. All right, we've got a couple other things that I'm gonna be trying. One of which is Abyssalite is absolutely useless. 
Um, it used to be cool way back in the day, even though it was busted, uh, where you could build stuff out of Abyssalite, but nowadays it's really not that useful. So I'm just taking all the Abyssalite and moving it off of these piles and into its own spot here that's in a vacuum, just so that all of this is effectively not really in the game anymore. It is, but it's not accessible by my duplicates, and it's not going to be exchanging any heat with anything. It won't be considered as a part of any of the calculations in this big pile. So, yeah, I'm trying to do that to test out a little bit of performance things as well. Not the craziest stuff. Also, somebody told me something very interesting that I never realized, and that is that these oxygen diffusers don't count as industrial machinery, which is really interesting. It means that all the rocket builds where we were trying to isolate these... Uh, oxygen diffusers into their own little rooms wasn't really worthwhile because they didn't count as industrial machinery. I don't know if this has ever changed. Again, I've been playing this for a long time and it's hard to remember the status of every single building over time, especially since I've taken quite long breaks in between uh, playing the game and not playing the game sometimes. Uh, I don't remember everything, so uh, I didn't e I either never thought that I'd never tested that this was an industrial machine, or at one point it was, and it was invalidating a room, so I was just like, oh, it's an industrial machine, I better not do it. But apparently in rockets, it's fine. So that's an interesting thing that you guys left down in the comments that really helped out, so yeah, thanks for letting me know about that. Uh, let's see, do we really need to talk any more about the rocket platform? I don't think so. I think I have made a decision on what we're gonna be doing with the, uh, man, what is this called? The uranium centrifuge, that's not what I want. Research reactor, yeah. Um, we're just gonna be doing it with steam. So all of this liquid nuclear waste, I don't think I'm gonna do anything with, so I might just start pumping out into space and getting rid of it. Um, so I think I'll do that off camera here, nothing too wild. Let's take a look at one thing that was done during that break though. That is that we got ourselves a new achievement. Mine the gap is officially done, meaning that we don't have to go mining for stuff in space anymore to satisfy this achievement. We can move on from that. And what I'm going to be doing is moving on to a different one, sort of, in the sense that uh, each of these space point of interest should have space artifacts, and we need to grab 10 of them. Um, so, since I have all my mining rockets still, if you click on these, it'll say there's an artifact available here or not. So there you go, there's basically an artifact at each one. I'm gonna outfit all these rockets with a couple of artifact uh, modules so that they can grab those and I'll modify it. Actually, I could probably just get rid of this and the nose cone uh, and that'll give me plenty of room to go grab as many artifacts as I need to. I'll just knock out our space artifacts really quickly with all these rockets that we have available. That'll give us a good way to test any of our performance improvements that we've done here, so. I'm going to be getting on that and at least chipping away at that. We won't be able to finish that achievement until we get both the uh, achievements, or rather the artifacts that are on space points, or points of interest in space, whatever, and the ones that are located on the planet. So on planets, we've only discovered two, and that's because there's a lot more out here on these other asteroids that we haven't been to yet. So we need to go there and we need to grab them. Uh, but the biggest and overall point of this video, as you can tell from the thumbnail and from the last time we talked about the next video, we're going to be going and getting ourselves some moves. Many people mood. Thank you. I also am enjoying that um, I apparently have the ability to make many strangers from around the world say moo, and that is not a power that I wield lightly, let me tell you. Okay, so typical thing we're going to be doing is uh, prepping a rocket to fly out here and land on this asteroid. This is the Mu asteroid. Basically, there will be gassy Moos here, and one of our achievements is to tame every single critter. One of those includes a gassy Moo. There's also an individual one for taming a gassy Moo. And there's gas grass on this planet. Sorry, the game's saving right now, so we're getting this big hitch. Uh... The gas grass is something that we need to mutate in order to get mutated seeds and uh, complete that achievement. So hopefully we're going to knock out a whole bunch of them in this video since we've already knocked out one. We'll kind of see how far we get. Here's your gas grass for you, by the way. Uh, an interesting thing, not the most useful thing, honestly, that I have seen. Uh, but I also haven't really needed this, needed to depend on this very much, so I don't know. Interesting nonetheless. So we're going to be heading out there. And as is typical for the first step of getting a colonization rocket out, 
we need to set up all these bins for all the supplies that we want to take to that asteroid. So I'm going to follow that list that I talked about in the a couple videos ago um, and kind of just fill this up with all the supplies that I'll need. We can breeze through that really quickly once we get this all filled up, but I think that's going to be our focus for right now. I'm double checking that there's nothing else that we're missing, and I don't think so. In the meantime, I will still have my duplicates building out this wall, and I will just build it out with any other material that I get. This doesn't necessarily have to be plastic. People just recommend plastic because it's something that you can get in huge quantities from these Drecos, but I have actually drained all of my plastic reserves by now. So I'm going to try to solidify all these walls and just make them out of whatever. It doesn't really matter. Something cheap and something that I'm not really using. So for right now, I'm targeting Mafic Rock to do that. So that'll be the plan. Let's get these bins filled up. Uh, we'll build out our colonization rocket, which I think is going to be the exact same design as the previous one, since I'm probably going to take eight duplicates. Let me see the size of this, because we're on classic mode. So this, the meteors, or the meteors, the asteroids are a little smaller. Mm, maybe we'll only take like six or something like that, but uh, yeah, we'll probably build out the same design that we did before because our duplicates are going to need to live out of that rocket for a little while while it's landed there. And yeah, we'll continue to make progress toward a whole bunch of achievements. So let's get our stuff and let's get out of here. Okay, we've collected our supplies that we're going to be taking. Once again, we'll kind of breeze through this. So the things we're probably going to need when we get there is going to be plastic, lead, Steel, uh, some kind of refined metal, so gold, cobalt, some kind of metal ore, so it's a big mixture of just kind of stuff that I have, uh, some ceramic or igneous rock, reed fibers, some blossom seeds, which will hopefully get there this time, and somebody won't mess that up, uh, some dirts in here, rust, salt, atmo suits, glass, we have sand or regular, some kind of filtration medium. Algae, uh, this is a, some extra granite, uh, some extra igneous rock. And I'm going to bring some mud along uh, with this. So the reason I'm going to bring mud is because this asteroid that we're going to really does not have many natural resources. Uh, the geysers only here, the only geyser here is basically Cassie Moodier Shower. I didn't even notice that was a thing. That's hilarious. All right, uh, chlorine gas vent is pretty much the only thing here. And you can't do a lot with that. I guess you could, like, run some squeaky puffs, something like that for food, but that's pretty weak. Uh, but yeah, so that's where we're going to be going, and I think we're either going to be growing some food there with just a little bit of uh, stuff that we get, or we can just ship food there from the other asteroids, so that's another option. Uh, one of the very good reasons why to, we should be producing a lot of extra berry sludge here, because then you can just ship them over to other asteroids, so I think that's probably what we're going to be going for. I could also hook up a second interplanetary launcher on this, but we'll see. So, uh, now all we need to do is just sweep everything inside here once this all gets vacuumed out, which it should be in just a second. But we also have our artifact transport modules up on all five of these rockets, so this ought to clear it out in one trip. So let's pick a couple of routes here. These can hold two of them, so I think I'm going to bounce this one here, then there, then back, and that should give me two unique ones. Um, I. Um, I don't know for sure uh, whether each of these points of interest always has a unique uh, artifact or not. I've never tested that before, but it'd be interesting to know. So if you do know, let me know. Uh, that one, I think we're going to bounce off two closer ones. This one, can probably go down here and get these two. And it does need to stop there. I can't just like fly through it and grab it. I need to actively stop and then move to the next one. So a little annoying, but... Yeah, we'll grab those two there. This one could probably go here and then here. Yeah, I think. Yeah, let's do that. And then this one could just go up into the right, grab it from here, and then I guess from here, and then head back. So that ought to give us 10, and that ought to give us get us halfway through to that achievement being done. So yeah, let's go ahead and launch these. It'll also be interesting to see what kind of performance uh, changes we have seen. It's not a lot, honestly. Um, the wall of plastic and mafic rock has grown. It's probably also worse because I'm recording, so my frame rate is pretty terrible. So I think I might just record on the lowest speed, just so we get a better frame rate now. Uh, but yeah, the, the mafic rock wall has grown quite a bit, so we're looking about like this now. 
I'm going to try to wall this off as much as I can with other duplicates that are here, just so that it's a better, you know, viewing experience for this video. If it were just me and I was just playing it, I'd probably just not really care and deal with the bad performance. I'm also kind of pre-doing some research on this because I really do want to make that video about um, all the, like, research and stuff that can go into optimizing performance short of just, you know, calling someone up from Clay and saying, hey, how does the game work? But also, there's a lot of other factors to it, so I don't know. I'm spending a lot of time thinking about that. So, uh, now once we get that all vacuumed out, I'll have my duplicates loaded in here just with one big sweep command. Here's the interior of the rocket that's going to be taking these six duplicates there. Once the duplicates are in here, I'll delete these three and re-add their mess tables back. Room overlay looking about like this. This is a really simple rocket, by the way. Um, nothing too wild about it. I think you're going to be fine. Get out of there. Yeah, and I'm getting rid of all of our uh, nuclear waste so that we can just wall this off here. So, yeah, apologies for the kind of bad frame rate. I do think recording does make it quite a bit worse. Um, so if this does get too bad and I can't get on top of the performance nearly enough, I will look into some new parts for my PC to make this better. Because I'm sure watching everything in super low frame rate is not very enjoyable. So, we're just going to get this rocket loaded up. And uh, I think we'll rejoin once we actually fly out to the planet's orbit. So, I guess when they get right here, sure. So, I'll we'll try to do a fancy little edit of them just appearing. Here we go! And as the duplicants stare out the window, they hear a faint moo. That means that we're here. We're going to start landing on this planet and settling it kind of similarly to how we did with the ice planet a couple videos ago. So most of this should look pretty much the same. Uh, the only thing, well, I guess one of the things that's really different is I'm going to bring a rover with me and a spacefare, or sorry, a trailblazer module. Um, I had made both of those out of steel on purpose just because we're not going to be spraying resources down before we go. Instead, we are going to... Just build both of them out of steel, and then we'll have enough for the platform after we deconstruct the landers that they go in. So let's figure out who we're going to take here. Um, oh, by the way, looks like this is not cleaning out the carbon dioxide well enough. They're like all huddled up here to try to get some room to breathe. Uh, I think we probably need to leave this running for quite a while longer. Um, sure. Let's just let it run. Okay. So, we need to pick a duplicate that's going to be going down to the surface for us. So, who do we want? Who has the best skills for this? Let's see. Hmm. I think Ellie's pretty good. Yeah, let's take Ellie. That'll be fine. She's at least maxed out in the two most important skills that we're going to need for this. So, Ellie, get in your suit. That one only has 7%. 0.09%. I don't even ever think I've seen something that low. All right, this is close enough. Ellie, get in your suit. Or just go to the bathroom. Yep, great timing. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, jeez. All right, well, we'll at least get the rover on the surface. So we're just going to deploy the rover's module. And this rover's module will be also made out of steel. So as soon as the rover lands, it can just uh, deconstruct the thing that it landed in. And that ought to give us what we need. So we'll get that in just a second. Very gently land here. There's the rover. So now we can deconstruct that. That'll give us a little bit of steel. Ellie, are you in your suit yet? No. No. Ellie, what are you doing? Why are you not in your suit? It's assigned. Are they on break right now? So what's going on? Come on. Man, this is really rough. No, you're not. What? Ellie, get in your suit. What are you doing? Get down here. Put your suit on. Suit? Suit? Yep. Okay, thank you. Jeez. I'm trying to protect you from, like, suffocating on the surface, and here you are being like, Oh, I don't care about that. Alright, so we're in the suit. Let's go ahead and deploy Ellie down here. Come on, there we go. Just gonna land it right there. And Ellie should be on the way, and as soon as we get that, we will have the platform. So we're gonna need to tame these gassy moves, but we're also gonna need to live here for just a little while. I probably wanna build the platform in a place that's pretty convenient for the rocket to, for us to live in. So 
I probably want to build it over here. Let me see if I can start making a little bit of progress over there. Uh, we'll probably need Ellie to dig out a couple tiles of igneous rock just so that we can use that for ladders. But uh, this is also one of the reasons why I'm mostly doing it this way because people suggest to uh, just make the two things out of steel and that'll give you enough for a rocket platform. I usually like to spray the resources down only because it gives you a lot of flexibility for situations like this rather than having to rely on mining stuff out. Um, but this still works fine, so I'm okay with doing it this way. Whoops, that's too far. Uh, it's kind of messy, but that'll work. So our robot and Ellie can get to work here, but that ought to give us enough steps to at least start building the rocket platforms. We could probably just drop it like right here, should be fine. So there we go, let's speed this up a little bit. Gonna get kinda not great frame rates. Oh, I don't even know if Ellie can actually reach that, so let's build these two. Where are you going? Oh, probably to supply the rocket platform. Okay, so the rover is definitely helping out here as well. Hurry up, Ellie. Everybody is waiting so awkwardly. Okay, there we go. Man, you can build this from really far away. There's probably some kind of formula for that. Also, this is very radioactive, so we need to get Ellie back in the rocket here pretty soon. Almost there. We also need to make sure Ellie doesn't, like, stand where the rocket is going to land, since it should be a ton of radiation. So we'll get her out of the way. Should be able to just land this on the platform now. The rover, I guess, can just hang out for a little bit while we get this all ready. Maybe we can start building some other stuff over here. We'll just need to manually keep Ellie out of the way. Performance is so bad right now. I guess being on another planet with so much going on is probably a good contributor to it. Ellie, I don't want you here. Get out of the way. There we go. Now we can just switch the modules so that we can get the modules within range of our duplicates to be able to get out. And uh, we can delete the engine here in just a second. I want Ellie to delete this because sometimes this can cause weird stuff with the duplicates inside. So I guess I probably should have moved it up. But for right now, I'm just gonna get Ellie back in there since I need her to get out of the radiation and also not be sunburned because this is pretty unforgiving. But that ought to do it. Uh, so I think I'm going to do something very similar to what we did on the ice planet, which is just kind of make a montage of our tasks as we move in here. But the basics are just going to be to get a radiation shield up, get some power generating, get a place that generates oxygen so that they can actually live inside here. Then when it's time to start messing around with these gassy moves or the gas grass will come back. But yeah, montage, montage time. Let's go. Oh, man, landing on this planet has been a real disaster, only because the radiation is so bad. And on this difficulty, I think I'm just too callous about going out here in amongst all the radiation and just building stuff. I do want to get duplicates below this radiation shielding, but they've been stuck in the uh, rocket for a long time, just cleaning up their own vomit, people having stress reactions, destroying stuff, eating a bunch of food. It's uh, really a mess. Uh, fortunately, the other asteroids are fine. Abe is just uh, thinking about chicken on the toilet again, which is pretty standard. So yeah, this has been really rough. I've just been in here for basically the entire cycle where they just sleep in their own vomit and wake up and vomit some more. Uh, and all they can really do is just clean this up because it stresses them out to be in here, but they can't really go out and do anything else because everything else is kind of a lower priority. Uh, yeah, just total, total disaster of just getting stuck in here. Terrible radiation poisoning. Fortunately, we're kind of coming out of it now, so hopefully we should be able to get out there and start actually making some progress, so... I think this will be the last of it. Uh, well, no, right as I say that. Thanks, Ellie. Perfect. Right on to Gerald vomiting, or cleaning up the vomit. That's a horrible exchange, but, uh, someone's, someone's got to do the work. All right, so hopefully this should be the last of it. People should start exiting the rocket here in just a second and start getting to work. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna start getting some actual stuff done and get under this radiation shielding and start getting some oxygen to be generated inside here. If I can have them at least like sleep and eat in here, that would be great, but yeah, just being out here is so rough because there's so much radiation on this planet, but yep, just gonna kind of slog through it and get as much done as I can and we'll see where we end up.
right, we're getting down to the last of the whole moving in portion of this. So I think we are sufficiently moved in. But uh, we also need to do a couple other things, and one of which is we need to start getting all this liquid chlorine uh, contained somewhere that we can assure its temperature is something that we can use, and also potentially get more of it if we do need more, because there is a chlorine vent right here. It's the only vent on the whole asteroid, so it's got to be the chlorine vent. Uh, so yeah, we're going to grab that. But uh, we need a way to keep that cool. And the tricky thing with this is that liquid chlorine is uh, a weird substance. Um, it can go down to minus 101, but at minus 34, it will start turning back into vapor. So we can't have a situation where all this gas is off and we lose all of it because we really need all this liquid chlorine for the gas grass that we're going to grow. And only because we need the achievement where we mutate the gas grass into... Uh, a, a mutation. That should be the last mutation that we need, and once we get that, that should be it. Actually, you know what? I don't, still don't think we've gotten our water weed. Let me take a look at this. Oh, I need to activate it here real quick with our printing pod. But what we're going to need, or rather what I want to do, is I want to create some super coolant to be the medium that we send in and out of the aqua tuner to keep everything cool. Only because its thermal conductivity is just horrible. Uh, and super coolant is a lot more flexible, so I want to use something like that to help keep this liquid chlorine at the temperature that it's at. And we'll create a cooling setup probably right here, and then probably a huge chlorine setup. Maybe this whole thing. I'll have to see how much space I think that we need um, and what else we have on the map. Maybe like this and over will all be the chlorine pool. And we'll just kind of keep it in there. Uh, I might level out the bottom just to get it all kind of funneled down to one place. So yeah, I think we'll do something like that. But if we're going to get super coolant, we need to create it. So let's go back home and let's set up our molecular forge, which I talked about a long time ago. And we didn't really do anything with it at the time. So I need to get rid of a few buildings here because the molecular forge is kind of a tall building. But this was why we put our petroleum drop in so long ago, because this is the building that requires the petroleum to be taken to it manually by a duplicate. So the building is here, um, and there's a bunch of stuff in the way, and I think my duplicates are busy on this asteroid, continuing to build our giant wall. So I'll get our molecular forge up, and then we'll see if we have everything that we need for super coolant. I'm a little suspicious that we might still need graphite, but I do think we mined out a whole bunch of fullerene when we were going out on our uh, mining missions. So I'm pretty sure, yeah, I think we got it from here. So I'm pretty sure that we have enough to make a bunch of super coolant and send it to ourselves. Let me get that built really quickly, and then we'll go back to the other asteroid, start building out the cooling setup, and then we will get that finalized before we finish up and uh, get the two things that we need or for the achievements on that other asteroid. Uh, so we can start ranching the uh, gassy moose and get the gas grass up. So we'll get that done in a second. Okay, here's our molecular forge. Now we can make a whole bunch of super coolant. Uh, we have a lot of petroleum, we have a lot of fullerene, and we have a lot of gold. So I don't really know how much we're going to need, but this makes a hilarious amount with every single batch. And all we need it for is really just to fill up a few tanks. So I don't know. Let's make 15. Sure, that should be plenty. And then what we make, we will just need to send over to the other asteroid. So we can use these launchers for that. Right now, these launchers are not really being used. Uh, they were to send a few things, phosphorite being one. Uh, don't really need to send that anymore because the other asteroid should have plenty. At least I'm pretty sure it does. Let's double check this. Should all just still be sitting in here? No, I think it's actually sitting on the ground. Hmm, how much do we have? Phosphorite. Yeah, we have 57 tons here, so we have plenty to work with. Um, and the other asteroid that was using phosphorite is here, but I'm going to stop using it here because we don't really need it. I guess we do need it for sending out uh, hydrogen to other places, but again, plenty of hydrogen here already. You can see just in our uh, payload opener, there's still 12 tons left, which is all of the power that's going to be generated on this asteroid. So I'll keep an eye on that. But also on this asteroid, the phosphorite was being used to power this, which we are now out of bleachstone and phosphorite because it's just never managed to churn out a uh, mutated waterweed seed. So we're going to be doing the next level of extremeness to try to get that mutated. 
We're gonna be building it right next to our giant death reactor of uh, shine bugs. We're just gonna build it right down here. And the radiation levels ought to be enough this time. This is me totally overdoing it because I'm so tired of waiting for this. Uh, so I think if we just throw it right here, we can tap into our saltwater geyser. We can put up some cooling and stuff like that for it. We might already be doing some cooling on that if I'm not mistaken. Maybe we're not. I can't remember if we're running it through our big water area, which is right here. I think we're only using this to warm stuff up and not cool it down. Yeah, we may need to cool it just so that we can feed it to those plants nicely because we don't have very strong cooling over there. So, yeah, we'll figure that out. But, um, anyway, we are very off course. We're making our super coolant and we're going to be sending it out via one of these interplanetary launchers. We could send it with this one. This one is going to be sending water because I will want some water on that asteroid. Or, sorry, it's sending, um... What is this? This is ethanol, so that we have a way to exchange temperatures without using up water or anything like that. And the other one is sending out something else. Yes, yeah, ceramic, so that I have more to build with once we get there, especially for the pipes. So we are going to now point all three of these at a new place, which is going to be the gassy asteroid. And then we'll set up a little collection place for the super coolant. It could just be something really basic. Actually, what's funny is we could just carve into this which might be an interesting way to do it. Uh, like that, I guess. And then <laughs> it doesn't really look like much, but it'll carve out a little spot that we can then bring the super coolant, just drop it off and pump it straight into the launcher and then send that over here. We will uh, need a, oh, we do have a payload opener done now. So there we go. Uh, payload opener is gonna be used to unpack all the stuff that we get. It's already dropping here, as you can see. But we will set up a targeting and all that kind of stuff once we get cooling. Cooling setup is probably going to sit right here. So again, very standard steam turbine, aqua tuner combo. It is the most powerful cooling thing in the game by far. So there's really no reason not to use it unless you just want to deprive yourself of things, which we are no stranger to for sure. I'm going to put two different aqua tuners in here. One's going to be to keep the chlorine cool, which we shouldn't have to worry about too much, but just in case... We need to produce more or something. The other one's just gonna be able to keep this uh, cool so we can keep our steam turbine cool and so we can send out some cooling to the payload opener and that kind of stuff, which I may need to widen this a little bit. Let me think about this. Yeah, hmm. I might actually need to not build this right here. Let me build this in a little bit better location. I need to build it over here just so we have enough space for everything. Yeah, let's do that. So if we do that here, that ought to give us enough for at least one tank of stuff. I'm also going to be collecting my polluted water, which is what this is for right now. Um, just going to be collecting polluted water so that we can use that to circulate for any of the payload opener stuff that we need to cool down. So yeah, lots of stuff on the way here. Just need to collect all the chlorine in one place. I'll get the cooling set up all built out. And we should have super coolant and everything else here in just a bit, so I'll get on that. Okay... We've got our cooling set up ready. We've also got all of our chlorine contained in one place. Uh, I will wait to build extra tiles here to get everything to funnel down to this one low point right here, which is where all the chlorine can be drawn in. Uh, the cooling setup is pretty straightforward. We have two aqua tuners. One's just to keep this pool of ethanol very cold so that we can cool this and maybe some other stuff in the future, like an oxygen production area, because we're still surviving on algae for the time being. Uh, the second one is going to be to keep our chlorine cool, um, and that is a vast understatement. It's going to be extremely cold, but we need the super coolant here, which I'm going to send after we get all the ethanol here that we want. So I have the ethanol uh, in this area right here for cooling. I'm going to also add it right here because the freeze point of ethanol is very low. Uh, I think it's lower than the chlorine, so minus 114 and the chlorine is minus 101. So if I leave ethanol right here, we can at least be sure that it's not going to freeze or have any problems with it or evaporate for that matter. So yeah, ethanol, pretty good stopgap for this. So I will drop some in there once we get more of it. Uh, let's go ahead and set up our area to start taming these moos. Uh, I think what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna set this up in a way that we're not actually gonna use in this run. But I know that a lot of people will draw inspiration from these type of builds if they want to run something like this uh, themselves in their own games. 
So I'm going to set it up as if I were uh, basically creating a setup in which I could use the natural gas. The natural gas is the big thing that I would want here um, if I were running this setup, because that's kind of part of the point of having these. Uh, then you could ship that natural gas over to, to other asteroids. I still probably wouldn't do this unless I didn't have access to the uh, Saturn critter traps and all the hydrogen that they produce because the hydrogen is just busted. Um, so if they ever patch that, I guess this will become a lot more useful. So uh, inside here, we're going to have our area for the gas grass. So I'm going to throw up a whole bunch. I'm not going to throw up. That sounds really bad. Uh, I'm going to leave that to my duplicates. I'm going to put up a whole bunch. What the? Oh, I hate this bug. No, go away. I don't like you. Let me see. How do we get rid of this? That? That? No, it's spreading. What is happening? Okay, fix, please. Anyway, um, so I'm just going to create an area that has a whole bunch of hydroponic farm tiles. Uh, you don't necessarily need this many. I'm only putting this many in here right now uh, just because I want to give us the best chance of getting a mutation. So inside here, we're just going to put a few buildings down. And those buildings are going to be a grooming station for the moose. Uh, actually, I don't remember. Can these be groomed? Yeah, I, for some reason I'm having a hard time remembering. I don't remember if they become tame from that or from something else, but I'm pretty sure it's that. Uh, also note that these moose need a lot of space. Uh, they need double the space of what typical critters would need. So 16 cells. We'll figure out how many this is here in just a minute. Um, I really would not care that much uh, about all of the natural gas that would get produced if it were me. But, uh, oh, I guess I could just do it this way. So for now, I'm just going to let it go out into space. But I will eventually add a liquid lock uh, to contain everything so that they will produce a whole bunch of natural gas in here. The, ga the gas grass doesn't actually care about having an atmosphere at all. So I'm not going to be too worried about that. Uh, we're going to put in a milking station, by the way, and then also a uh, drop-off so that we can get more moos if we need them. Uh, we can just go ahead and put a critter sensor in here, and this critter sensor can be hooked up to something that comes out here because the, the moos actually come down in their mood ears. That wasn't my pun. That was the game, just in case you missed that part earlier. Uh, but they will drop down on their own. They do not lay eggs, so that you that you'll just kind of get a continuous like replenishing of them from the sky. So when we want more, we can always do the same trick of having a critter drop off that's hooked up to our critter sensor and only grabbing them if we need more inside this room. So we can just do something like this. We'll plant all of our gas grass here. And then down at the bottom, we do have our pump submerged in this liquid chlorine. Sorry about the frame rate, by the way. It always gets so much worse when I'm recording. I'm hoping to get this a little bit better for the next video for sure. So, yeah, we're stuck waiting for the load while we uh, stroke the mustache of Mr. Moo here. Is it just me or is this not like a certain Mythbuster uh, critter embodied? But there you go. All right, so... Uh, we've got the stable that should be here in just a second. And also notice that I'm putting glass tiles above these because the gas grass needs a good amount of light in order to grow. So I'll be doing that. And then in the areas where my duplicates are going to be working, I will have very thick layers of lead or plastic or something like that to protect them from the radiation. So there we go. Uh, we do need somebody that has the Critter Ranching 2 skill. And I think I'm also going to leave an, another Mari here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and spec him out for this. If he gets too stressed, I can remove some of these, but he'll probably be the one that I leave behind. He'll also need cooking and stuff, so maybe I should just do this now. Uh, oh, I don't have this anymore. I thought I had a station to scrub skills, but apparently I got rid of it. So here we go. Oh, by the way, I did analyze the artifacts here, which will make some progress for us. We'll take a look at that in just a second. So there we go. Get our skill scrubber. And in here, let's see how many tiles this winds up being. Uh, oh, 84,000 tiles, of course. Yeah, it's not all closed off yet. So uh, all we'll really need to do is wire up our liquid chlorine to this and plant the gas grass. And once we get uh, Amari or another Mari scrubbed and get some 
uh, moves in here. We'll start messing around with this stuff. It's been so long since I played around with this, I'm pretty sure that this is all that is needed, but I'll double check. Also, kind of comment a little bit more on my intention with these, because I don't find them to be all that useful. Uh, but I will do my due diligence throughout this playthrough and really make an attempt to make them useful, but I don't know. We'll see. So let me get the rest of this all filled out, and then we'll keep going. Okay, friends, another Mari has emerged from our skill scrubber, known only now as Moo Man. Here he is. He's going to be the person that stays behind. We also need to task him with anything related to ranching, so it looks like we've got that. And let's set this up. So we have 89 tiles to work with, so that should be, what, five moves, I believe? I think so. I don't know. Maybe it's less. Let's see, 64 tiles would be that. So yeah. Yeah. Five moves. So let's grab these. Here we go. Five of them. And then what we can do is set up our critter sensor to say if we're below five critters, uh, then to activate this, which is going to only allow one gassy move out here. Or I guess zero. There we go. There, so Amari should, sorry, Moo Man, formerly known as another Mari. He's had the worst names bestowed upon him, I gotta say. Uh, let me stop sweeping all this dirt, by the way, or at least lower the priority. So, uh, he should come up here and wrangle a Moo for us. The gas grass is now growing and it also does require dirt. So we do have dirts being shipped here and uh, stored in this conveyor receptacle. These take a little while to grow, not too, too long, but hopefully we're going to get some uh, mutations. It's pretty unlikely, honestly, because the radiation is kind of low. So I think my plan is going to be to... Oh, I need to raise the priority on this so that he prefers that instead of this. Stop it. Do something else. Take the moo. There you go. I like how he puts that giant moo in a bag. There we go. Yeah, perfect fit. So you should be able to drop it in here, and then I believe you should uh, groom it, right? Or am I thinking of this wrong? I don't know, I guess we'll see. But basically this is gonna get groomed. Once it gets tamed, uh, we are going to get the achievements. So we'll go ahead and check those off in this video. The milking station, I don't know if I really have that much of a plan for it. Also at least give one round of uh, gas grass growth to see if we happen to get the achievement. I really doubt we're going to, but we'll see. So yeah, if not, we might need to come back here and improve the setup a little bit. I think we're pretty much ready on this planet to call it a day. Um, we're just gonna be sending ethanol down into here to create this. I don't think we're gonna need any more liquid chlorine, maybe ever, or at least not for a long time. So I'm not gonna worry too much about that. And all we really need to do is build a rocket and get our duplicates out of here. So that should be it. Uh, so let me uh, give them a little bit of time to at least get the two achievements. We'll build the rocket and we'll get everybody else out of here, except for Moo Man, who we are going to leave behind. And then I think we'll call this video good. Okay, friends, let's wrap this up. I think we're about ready to leave as we've finally got all of the systems in here that we would want before leaving this to just one duplicate. Um, Quite a few things have changed, actually. I was not expecting it to take this long, but a few things kind of got kicked off in order. Uh, one is we burned out all of our algae and all of our rust. Uh, not all the rust made the trip like I expected. I think the duplicates are just dropping it or something that I'm not noticing. So not all of it came and it went pretty fast. So we noticed it in time though. And all the mud that we brought was actually very handy because it produced a lot of water for us. And that water can be used for a really simple electrolyzer setup. So this duplicate that's living here is basically going to be living off the mud. Pretty classy uh, setup here for him. So there you go. Uh, Moo Man definitely knows class. Just mud and cows. There you go. Okay, uh, so we have that. We have a very simple hydrogen setup just to use up any extra hydrogen. Uh, that comes off of here. We have plenty of power. So much power gets generated at this asteroid from the solar panel. So I'm not too worried about that. So that's done. Uh, let's see. Got ourselves a nice fancy recreation room with a double... 
I don't know if this is actually a real dupe. I don't think any dupe has this hairstyle with this, uh... Yeah, with this color hair. Hmm. Anyway. The bracking that's flowing from this, I really don't know what to do yet, but this is the finished setup. Uh, I forgot that the grooming stations for these need to be moved over one hex from the side, or I guess like a tile from the side, because these are some big old moves and they take up a lot of room. So you actually need extra space on the side to be able to groom them properly. There is a milking station here and I'm only holding two because otherwise they will overeat the gas grass and we won't get the, the mutation that we're looking for. Speaking of mutation, in order to encourage that, I have a radiation lamp here that's just going to be putting off some extra radiation just to hopefully help these uh, mutate a little bit quicker, or mutate if we're on it. There we go. Got to get those in there. Like I mentioned, I don't care about the natural gas that these uh, moos produce. Um, in general, I don't care much about anything that these things produce, uh, but... The, I just set it up this way just in case you wanted to draw any inspiration from it. Um, I am pumping this out quite aggressively because the issue with this is I'm using natural light to grow the gas grass. But if there's too much natural gas in here, it really hurts how much the light can get down and actually shine on this. Also, this is one of the very first times I've built a light sensor. I haven't really had a reason to do it, but this is definitely one of them. So I have a light sensor here that will only let the radiation lamp run. There you go, just turned off. If the light is greater than 12,000 lux. When it's lower than that, these won't even be growing anyway, so there's no reason to spend uh, uranium on this. So needless to say, I am sending myself uranium from the other asteroids, so that is being shipped here. Lots of little projects going on here, by the way. Uh, so this nowadays is sending uranium and also sending extra algae so that I actually have some algae for the rocket on the way home. So let's see, the actual plumbing for this. Uh, we have the super coolant all delivered here and it is cycling through. So it will cycle through if it is too warm in here and that is a really interesting choice of words to call this warm because it's sitting at about negative 90 C. I really want it to be sitting as low as possible without hardening. So the setting that I have on this is if a packet of super coolant comes across this that's uh, warmer than negative 85C, it's really just burning up at above 85C, uh, it's going to be sent up into our aqua tuner, cooled down and sent back in. Otherwise it's going to be allowed to pass. And I am sending it up here on a loop to cool off this area. It'll just kind of sit in these pipes when we're not circulating. Uh, so when it sits up in these pipes, it cools this natural gas down quite a bit because these gassy moves actually produce quite a bit of heat, uh, pulled by virtue of the natural gas that they put out, but I don't know if their, their body temperature actually impacts a whole bunch of other things. I think it does. I haven't really played around with the body temperature of these very much, uh, but yeah, so this area does get kind of warm, and if you're not careful, it will start breaking your pipes. I also have the same type of setup that we used in our Saturn Critter Trap setup a really long time ago, where we're actually circulating this chlorine constantly in order to keep it fresh in these pipes so that it doesn't sit in there and break. You can even see sitting in there, it uh, starts to go into a gaseous state at about negative 32, so it's really right on the border when it's in there. So cooling this is definitely its own challenge for sure. Especially because the radiation lamp is also going to be producing a decent amount of heat. So there you go. Yeah, lots of stuff going on here. So Moo Man is going to get real comfortable on this sludge press. They're taking turns smashing the mud. Uh, so Moo Man is going to be left behind. Everybody else is going to be going into the rocket. I think we have plenty of algae. We have plenty of stuff that we're taking back home. There can probably be some smaller projects here for Moo Man to keep himself busy while he's out here. But I think we're pretty much ready to send everybody home. So let's go ahead and change our destination to back home. So there we go. We are not fueled enough for a round trip, but we only want a one-way trip anyway. So let's acknowledge the warnings and get them out of here. And I think we will call that good. As for the content plan in the next little while, um, I will be traveling very soon. I don't know if I will be able to get out another video before I leave, and I will be gone for about 10 days. So I'll be out for a little while. There will be a gap in videos either after this one or after the one that follows this one. I'll try to get another one out as soon as I can, but uh, schedule's been pretty compact lately, and later in the game takes a lot longer to get this uh, stuff out. Oh, we also need to grab our achievements. Well, how could I forget this? 
So we go Critter Whisperer and moving on up. The Critter Whisperer, all we needed for that was our Gassimu because we've tamed everything else. And moving on up is just tame a Gassimu. So there you go, two for one. Uh, there's going to be a few others. We need to get the last mutations of the seeds like we were talking about. And then the main story ones and a couple other smaller ones are pretty much the only ones left. So, yeah, we've only got a few more videos to go here before we're going to be done. So, our space artifacts are finished. We did talk about that in this video. And terrestrial artifacts will be landing on all the other asteroids and we'll be moving into one of them. The rest of them, I think we're just going to grab the artifact and get out. Um, I do have other videos where I do settle on every single one of them in my walkthrough videos. But for this one, I think it would be better off or fine just grabbing the artifacts and calling it good because we've done so many other extraneous things. So yeah, content plans. I will try to be back as soon as I can with another video. I'll make a post about it so that you know what the schedule is if I happen to leave before I finish the next video. But I'll be doing my best to get that out. So yeah, oh, one thing too, in the comments, please let me know what to do with this bracking. I really don't care about this that much. Like. It's so late in the game that any practical use it would have has kind of already passed. If these were coming down on a main asteroid or something like that and you had to build your strategy around it, I could see it making sense. But if you have any suggestions for what to do with the bracking, please let me know because I really have no plans. So right now I'm just giving it to my duplicates that live here. Uh, Moo Man is going to be on his own drinking bracking and eating barbecue uh, until he is, you know, green in the face from radiation or something like that. I don't know. Why do you have radiation issues? Maybe he was down here messing around with the uh, plants. Okay, anyway, this is really rambling on. All right, let's zoom out to this. This is our home asteroid. There you go. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.